Welcome back. The late fashion designer Coco Chanel once said a woman who cuts her hair is about to change her life. A new study out of the US suggests the pursuit of perfect hair could actually be impacting our health. Researchers looked at 18 hair products sold in the US and traditionally used by black women, like hair relaxers, hot oil treatments, anti-frizz or leave-in conditioners. Every product they looked at contained endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs. That, mean, that means they uh, interfere with the way our bodies produce hormones. And many of those products are actually banned in Europe. And what's of particular concern is how few of those compounds are listed as product ingredients. And that makes it difficult for users to know exactly what they're putting on their hair and scalp. Well, the study is published in the journal Environmental Research. Tola Okogu is a hair care blogger and author. She's with me. Her children's books explore the relationship between girls and their hair. And joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, is the study author, Dr. Jessica Helm, a scientist at the Silent Spring Institute. Jessica, I'm going to come to you first to talk about the health problems that you found black women tend to have uh, more than other women in the US. There was, there was something that stood out for you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we know from previously published research that uh, black women have higher rates of uterine fibroids, of infertility, earlier onset of puberty, as well as rising rates of endometrial and breast cancers. And did you find a link with the kind of chemicals that are in the hair products we talked about? So what we found was that endocrine disrupting chemicals were frequently present in these products. We know that uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals are present in people's bodies, that some of the same chemicals that are in these products are in women's bodies frequently. Um, and we know that they have effects at high doses. Our study wasn't set up to specifically uh, answer the fact, uh, the question of whether or not these chemicals were directly influencing health, but the fact that these chemicals are, are frequently found in these products was of concern to us. Let's pick up that concern with Tola, because I know you not only act as a hair care coach, you're aware of what's on the market now, yes. um, but you've been aware of over years the kind of products that have been used by black women to, to care for or tame or however you want, you want to put it, your hair. Yeah, um, with black hair, it naturally requires a lot more products than any other hair type because it's drier and it also requires more lubrication. So black women do tend to use a lot of products in one session, so they'll layer products. Um, and historically, the products that we buy, they are, I've been aware for a while that the ingredients are on the cheaper end and the brands, it does appear to be quite low quality products and most of the products are bought in hair shops in areas where the demographic is majoritively black. And a lot of products traditionally have come in from the States. Yes, they have. Um, historically, I mean, I've been using hair products obviously for a long time. And when I was young, my mother used to relax my hair with little relaxer box kits that were directly imported from the US. So historically, most of our products do come from the US. And Jessica, there, there is another concern which is not often the ingredients aren't fully listed. So it's hard to know what you're dealing with when you buy these products. That's right. Yeah, we actually found that um, the majority of our the, the chemicals that we detected weren't listed on the ingredient label. Um, we did find that parabens tended to be better labeled, but they were by no means always labeled. Um, fragrance chemicals tended to be labeled with the word fragrance, but the actual ingredients within those fragrances were not listed on the label. Do you think, Jessica, that black women who use these products that are directed at them as a, as a market should be worried about their health because of this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, from a precautionary approach, I think it makes sense to um, reduce exposures to products that have chemicals that may cause harm and where there are opportunities to reduce that exposure. I think it makes sense to do that. Tola, what do you think about that? I agree. I agree completely. A few years ago when I became more ingredient conscious in terms of the products that I use and I kind of pick my products looking at the ingredients list and I've become more familiar with some of the chemical names, I have moved to more organic products and there are more products in the marketplace. There are a lot more UK manufacturers and as the trend has moved towards more natural hair, so have the products. So women are being more conscious about what is in the products they're using on their hair and skin and they're being more careful and picking products that are either more organic or have less cosmeceuticals and more natural oils, etc. 
And Tola, I'm interested in the fact that you speak to a younger audience as well. I mean, partly because of your coaching, but also the children's books. I think we can show some of the, the front covers of the books that, that you've published and are about to publish. Yes. And hair care is a massive issue. It is. It, it's something that speaks to the heart of identity for a lot of black women and black girls. Um, it, hair isn't just hair for us. It's the number one signifier of our race and it is very much tied into our race and how we view ourselves. And historically, our hair has been something we've kind of felt ashamed of and felt was inferior. So my books kind of are about celebrating black hair, black skin, black beauty, and hopefully helping a new and younger generation that's coming up develop a love for their hair and what is naturally coming out of their heads. And Jessica, just a, a, a final thought from you. I mean, the Silent Spring Institute, that makes me think about environmental awareness from the 60s on. And do you perceive that people now are much more concerned about ingredients and environment, especially when it comes to something so intimate as hair? Yeah, I think that there is, within some areas of society, there's some awareness, but I think by and large people are generally unaware of uh, the chemicals that are in their products and the potential that those chemicals might have to ha cause to cause harm. Well, Jessica, I think that's that's an important warning. And Tola, I suppose that's part of the, the education that needs to be done. Yeah, but our, my advice of Black would be educate yourself. Get to know some of the more common dangerous ingredients like parabens and even silicon oils. And some of the products you listed are commonly used. So if you educate yourself, it's, you can avoid it. And as I said, there are more products in the marketplace, so there is more choice and more variety. Well, Tola and Jessica, thank you both for joining us here on GMT. Thank you for joining us. And you can always talk to me on Twitter about any of the stories we've covered in a very busy news hour. I'm at Philippa BBC. Goodbye.